Hey guys, today I'm going to present a solution to Baltic Way 2018 problem 19. Firstly, we'll have a look at the problem statement. We are given an infinite set of positive integers b, such that for every numbers a and b and b, with a greater than b, we have that also the number a minus b divided by the greatest common divisor of a and b is contained in b. We are asked to prove that this condition implies that b consists of all positive integers. Looking at this expression, we see the greatest common divisor of a and b. And for general a and b, we don't perfectly understand the behavior of the greatest common divisor of a and b, except for maybe that it divides a and b, and therefore it must also divide a minus b. So since a is greater than b, this is indeed a positive integer, which is good. To get a better understanding of this expression, a very natural first idea is to plug in the value b is equal to 1. Because we know that the greatest common divisor of any positive integer a with 1 is equal to 1, and therefore in this case we have that a minus b divided by gcd of a and b is equal to a minus 1 divided by 1. In conclusion, if we assume that b is equal to 1 is an element of capital B, then we get that for any a greater than 1, that is also in b, that a minus 1 must be contained in b as well. Hence, by induction, b must contain all numbers less than or equal to a. Now we also know by the condition that b is infinite, that it contains infinitely large numbers, and hence we can conclude that b must be equal to the set of positive integers. So we only need to prove that 1 is in b, and then by this argument we are done. Taking a look at the given condition, we see that given two numbers in b, we get a new number that must be contained in b. And this is quite small. Namely, we subtract b from a and then even divide by a positive integer. So this is definitely always less than a. If we could also prove that this is less than b, then from a and b and b, we would always get a smaller number that is contained in b. And then by infinite descent, we would have proven that 1 is in b. This is obviously not quite true. We can make up a counterexample, but this idea motivates us to use infinite descent to prove that 1 is in b. So to start, let us call the elements of b, b1, b2, and so on, in such a way that b1 is less than b2, and so on. We can use this notation to get some concrete results out of this. Namely, we know that b2 minus b1 divided by the GCD of b2 and b1 is less than b2, but it is also contained in b, and since b2 is the second smallest element of b, we can conclude that this must be equal to b1. This means that b1 is a divisor of b2 minus b1, and hence it also divides just b2. And in conclusion, we know that the greatest common divisor of b2 and b1 itself is nothing but b1. We can rearrange this equality to conclude that b2 equals b1 squared plus b1. So we know that b1 squared plus b1 is in b, and all the values between this and b1 are not in b. This is nice to know, but the question now is, how do we continue? Since we want to keep working with this condition on small elements of b, and since we have used up b1 and b2, the idea is to introduce b3. And analogously, we also get that b3 minus b1 divided by the GCD of b3 and b1 is contained in b. Now, since this is a positive integer less than b3, we conclude that this is either equal to b1 or b2. Let's consider the first case that this quantity equals b1. We can replicate these steps exactly to conclude from this equality that b3 must also be equal to b1 squared plus b1. But since b2 is less than b3, these two values should be distinct, and so we can cross out this first case. Hence, b3 minus b1 divided by the GCD of b3 and b1 is equal to b2, which we already know to be equal to b1 squared plus b1. This implies that b1 squared 
plus B1 must divide B3 minus B1. Since B1 itself is a divisor of B1 squared plus B1, this also implies that B1 must divide B3, and hence the greatest common divisor of B3 and B1 is again B1 itself. We conclude after multiplying both sides by B1 and adding B1 that B3 is equal to B2 times B1 plus B1, which equals B1 cubed plus B1 squared plus B1. The nice thing about considering three numbers, B1, B2, and B3, is that we now also get a third condition, namely using B3 and B2 out of this. Since we already have expressions for B2 and B3 in terms of B1, we can hope that this third condition will give us B1 is equal to 1 to finish our proof. So let's calculate the value of B3 minus B2 divided by the GCD, which we know lies in B. The numerator is just B1 cubed plus B1 squared plus B1 minus B1 squared minus B1. So in total, just B1 cubed, which is nice. And we want to use this also for our denominator because we can rewrite this as GCD of B3 minus B2, comma B2. And so this is just equal to the GCD of B1 cubed and B1 squared plus B1. Factoring out a B1, we are left with B1 squared and B1 plus 1 inside of the GCD. But since B1 is co-prime to B1 plus 1, the same holds true for B1 squared. And so this factor is equal to 1, and in total we get a B1. In total, this fraction comes out at B1 squared. B1 squared is strictly less than B1 squared plus B1, which equals B2. And so from the fact that b1 squared must be contained in b and that it is strictly smaller than b2, we can conclude that b1 is equal to b1 squared. Since b1 is a positive integer, this already implies b1 is equal to 1, and therefore we have proven 1 is in b as desired, and therefore we are done. <laughs>